Diane received her genital herpes diagnosis more than 30 years ago. It was very hard, mentally, very hard to deal with. But she is dealing with it by successfully living with it. I enjoy life. I, I take yoga. I, I do everything. It does not stop me from doing anything. She remains hopeful for a cure. But until then, knowing more about when and how frequent the virus is active or shedding are also important facts for people to understand. This was the first study to look over time at people that have HSV2 infection but don't have a history of genital herpes. And we really did not know before this how often the virus is active in the genital tract of such persons. Many people think with genital herpes infections that they can only sh spread the virus when they have symptoms. Doctors Anna Wald and Christine Johnston from the University of Washington in Seattle and co-authors studied almost 500 people, some with recurring genital herpes with symptoms and others testing positive for the HSV2 antibody having no clinical signs of genital herpes. All were asked to swab the genital area for at least 30 days to assess how often the virus was active. When we take people who are HSV2 positive, so they have antibody, but they don't have any history of genital herpes, still the virus is active on about 10% of the days in most of these persons. The study appears in a theme issue on infectious diseases and immunological disorders in this week's JAMA, Journal of the American Medical Association. So even people without a clinical history of genital HSV2 uh, are capable of spreading the virus to uh, sexual partners. These findings provide evidence that clinicians can use in counseling patients who've just been diagnosed with having HSV2 infection using a blood test as opposed to because they came in with genital sores. Catherine Dolph, The JAMA Report.